morning and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Columbia, Tennessee. It is always good to be together, even through these virtual worship experiences. We are always delighted to be gathered as God's people, with God's people, in the presence of the living God. This weekend is not only the birthday, but it is the time in which we celebrate and give acknowledgement to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., his life, his legacy, and his witness. In observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the church will be closed tomorrow, Monday, January 18th. In our bulletin, you will also see that there is a called congregational meeting. The called congregational meeting is for the purpose of electing our all-church nominating committee for 2021. The names that are putting, put, being put forward to you by the previous all church nominating committee of 2020 are these names Sue Brinkley, James Fleming, Megan Hill, Jane Sloan as our members at large, and then Tanya Potts, who will be the ruling elder to chair the committee, and Jim Ross, who will be the ruling elder to co chair the committee, and Sharon Shaw, who will be our deacon representative. The session has approved us to have this congregational meeting through SurveyMonkey. So what we will do is we will send an email out to the whole church that has a link to a SurveyMonkey in which you can cast your vote. If you would like to make that even easier for yourself, you can call Renee at the office and also give her your vote. It is a good day in which we can always be gathered as God's children in the worship of our God. I invite you to prepare your hearts and your minds, your body and your spirits for the worship of our Lord, who is indeed living among us. Let us worship God. In God's faithfulness, God seeks us. In our faithfulness, we seek understanding of God's call. Let us be called to worship. The one who calls us yearns for us to be clothed in a new self, created in the likeness of God. O oh Lord, you search us and know us. The one who comes bringing forgiveness also has a winnowing fork in hand, holding our sins to the wind. O oh God, we praise you, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Blessed is the one who calls us to follow truth, act with humility, and seek the heart of God. Come and see the good news of Christ.
confident that the one who knows us completely also knows the confessions of our heart. May our assurance be that God is ready to redeem. Let us confess our sins before God, neighbors and enemies. Let us pray. Holy God, your mercy is deeper and wider than our own understanding. Your knowledge of us is our continuous care and sustained life. We confess our indifference to your will and your word. So often we come and see only what we can expect to accept. We have troubled the water of your claim on our life together. We have failed our nation, neighbors, families, friends, and ourselves. Fashion in us hearts of your wisdom. Lead us to honesty and faith to begin again. And to renew our courage to truly follow Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our peace. God knows the words of our contrition before our conscience can speak them, and by God's grace alone, we are saved. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, healed, and made into a new creation. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Share a sign of peace with someone today by giving them a call or sending them a card. We all need encouragement in these trying times. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, 14 through 18. But first, let us pray. Gracious God, by the powers of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes and our ears, our hearts and our minds to your holy wisdom and love that it may come to live within us for the sake of Christ's love for the world. Amen. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading this morning is from John's gospel. Uh, it is the first chapter of John's gospel, verses 43 through 51. Let us hear the word of our Lord on this day. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord shall remain forever. Thanks be to God. If Psalm 23 is the most loved scripture that comes from the laments and the praises of the oldest church hymnal, then Psalm 139 should be the next most loved and learned. It should roll off the tongue just like our confession of a shepherd who leads us through any dark valley. Oh God, you search me and know me. You know my every action when I sit down and when I rise up. You, you discern my thoughts from far away. You seek out my direction and my rest. You are intimately familiar with, with all of my ways, which I may not always be so comfortable with all the time. Before I speak, O oh God, you know what I'm about to say. So is it really necessary to say everything I want? Because I can give it to you. Because you know me completely. You cover me up. You see every side of me. You see every side of everything. Such understanding. Such knowledge of you. It is too much for me to handle. Sometimes we have to meditate on God's word with the only words we have. Saying them in a way that helps us to get them rooted. To know that there is no distance, direction, depth, or desperation that God does not enter into. That God does not choose to enter into. From generations well before Jesus' time, God's people understood their heavenly creator as a God who, could, who just couldn't stand to be away. A God who desired to know them fully and completely. A God who lived where they lived. Mothers and fathers love to know where their babies are living when they move away. As the baby of the family, I know this all too well. There is, there is not a home, dorm, or apartment that I have ever lived in that my mother did not visit. And she always insisted, I just need to see where you are. And I have learned that that is unavoidable. Psalm 139 is a confession of a relationship with God that is unavoidable. And isn't that what this story about Nathaniel is really all about? Nathaniel's relationship with his Savior is unavoidable. But the real lesson of this story is not Nathaniel's change of heart or sudden confession. 
It's that Jesus tells him, you will see greater things than these. There is still so much more for me to show you. God searches. Jesus has come to help us see. Help us see ourselves and each other for who we really are. The first thing we learn about Nathaniel is that he is not so easily trusting of outsiders. I mean, if that doesn't resonate with us in our modern context, then we are not paying attention. I mean, it may be one of the most well-known questions or statements in the Bible next to get behind me, Satan, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, sometimes we are very hesitant and skeptical about outsiders. Nathaniel was told, we have found him, the one in which Moses and the prophets has told us about. But Nathaniel, he isn't so sure to trust blindly. It isn't always so easy to meet someone where they are or to accept where they are coming from. It is such a great notion, but it is, it is not always a simple endeavor. We are not always acceptable of where other people live, not physically, but where people live, ideologically, culturally, politically, emotionally, theologically, socially. As children of God, how can we come to see our neighbors, or yes, even our enemies, for who they really are? How can we treat one another and ourselves for who God intends us to be? God is searching, and God does see us. But Jesus comes to help us see ourselves and one another more clearly. I think right now, this is where we need to pause and take a moment to ask ourselves if we are letting Jesus help us with that. Or are we just living in these hesitant, skeptical, distrusting, distant, and desperate times, unable and unwilling to see that God is searching us The events over the last week, they have been more than heartbreaking. In, in the sermon I gave last week, I said heartbreaking, but they are more than heartbreaking. They are scary. They are troublesome. They are throwing everything out of whack. I heard an African-American colleague of mine say from the pulpit just last Sunday, we should be startled, but we should not be surprised. This is who we are. The calls for unity are faithful. The calls for the truth are faithful. The calls to love our enemies are faithful. The calls for justice and accountability are faithful. Calls for prayers are very faithful. But the calls for change and for transformation are a must. These times right now are, are deeply divided because we're finding it hard to live where other people live or to be accepting of where people are coming from. There are even maybe things in our culture and in our world right now that cannot be so easily solved with our own thoughts and prayers or by our ability or inability to agree or disagree. Something has to shift. But I found encouragement this week. 
I found hope in the words of someone who was in, a, in this, this community, in our beloved community. This young woman, she, she gave a devotion. She was assigned with the opening devotion at the deacons meeting this week. And I, I was just encouraged and struck by her words. She allowed me to share them with you, some of the things that were on her heart. She confessed to me <laughs> that she tried and tried and tried to just find something off the internet, just like we all do. <laughs> but she was being drawn to say something more. And in her words, if, if I'm reading them correctly, in her words, I can hear her searching for God in this moment. And in her words, I am certain God finds her. She writes this, I've been feeling like I'm not doing a very good job lately of loving my neighbors, some of them, or my enemies. We are called to do both of these things. Jesus said that loving your neighbor as yourself was the second greatest commandment just after loving the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind. But love my enemies? Wow. Who even are they? I'm going with a looser definition for this devotion and just say my enemies are those who I find disagreeable. I'm going to admit feeling a little judgy lately. In light of recent events in our country, I've felt discouraged. And the ability to find an onslaught of faults with other people. Even though I know I'm not alone with these feelings, I still probably shouldn't feel justified for some of I'm not talking about when laws are being broken or violence erupts and it's clear that someone is wrong. It's things that get my eyes rolling or my head shaking. I know judgment is not ours, but God's alone. We all do, right? It's hard not to let your mind go there, especially when we or watching the news or viewing social media, division seems to be everywhere. I'm generally not very outspoken, but I do have opinions. It's easy to find yourself on one side or the other. Rarely are we ever just in the middle. So how do we make division less divisive? I would love to have an answer to this. Can you imagine? People able to disagree agreeably. It would be fantastic. But since we were created in God's image, he gave us all of his emotions too. For us humans, that's where we struggle. We are emotional. I mean, why do you think they created emojis? When we let our emotions get the best of us, we can sometimes behave badly. Then you have sides being taken. One side is always right and the other side is always wrong, but really, who is who? My side is always right, right? The lines get so blurred and truthfully, only God sees the big picture and knows for sure. So my new goal to pray it's really not that new, but maybe how I pray or when I pray or what I pray for, not just my normal prayers, but for every judgmental thought that crosses my mind, at least the ones I catch, pray in that moment. And not just for the person I'm judging or disagreeing with, but for myself too. 
Because maybe in reality, it's me who could be more understanding. It says in John 1.16 that because of Christ, we have received grace upon grace. Christ is the perfect example. If he is bestowing grace to me, then I should be more gracious to others. Even when I totally disagree. Showing each other grace upon grace, she writes. Praying in that moment of disagreement to encourage a spirit that can listen and be heard and be more gracious, even when we totally disagree. Her admitting so honestly her discouragement and her judginess but also sharing with the deacons, and now I've shared with you, a vulnerability and a faith that seeks a further and deeper understanding, that encourages me. That gives me hope that we can all strive for. It is a peace that can cover us up. It is knowing that God is searching us and Jesus is helping us to see ourselves and each other for who we really are. A peace that covers us. On the weekend when we are celebrating the birthday and the life and the legacy and the witness of Martin Luther King Jr. I'm reminded of his words. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Jesus tells Nathaniel, there is so much more for you to see and to understand. You will see greater things than these. You will see healing in human hands. You will see sacrifices made in bodily form. You will see stomachs filled. You will see storms calmed. You will see heaven opening up for you and for all the world. You will see heaven on earth. And it is there. It is there where you see heaven on earth. That is where we will see more of ourselves, more of each other, for who we really are and who God intends us to be. I'm grateful for my friend's words. I am grateful for a God who helps us to seek a better understanding. I am grateful for a God who searches us. And I am grateful for a Savior in Jesus Christ who was here, the very living presence of God among us, helping us to see, giving us his vision of our life together. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, one God, mother of us all. Thanks be to God. Let us affirm what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge 
the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell in it. These are the words of the psalmist. They remind us of the many blessings that God pours out to us as both creature and creation. That we are the good stewards of this beautiful creation uh, that is the church that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. And it is through the work of the church, it is through the work of your um, faith that we are able to continue to do the good work in our community with our benevolences and to be transformational in the world. At the very heart of our commitment to the church, we bring all of ourselves, we bring our talents and our time and indeed our treasures so that we can share them um, with each other and so that we can share them with the people who are in our midst. It is the ministry that we are called to. My friends, if you have not done so, I invite you to take this time to find the giving button top of our website and to prayerfully consider a gift that you can give to the church. It is through your support that we continue to be strong in our ministry. If you have made a commitment for 2021, we want to show our deepest gratitude and appreciation for your commitment. We pray that this year will be very different, very soon, than the one we've had in 2020. We are hopeful for the many ways we will be called to be the church this year and to learn from the year that we have just had. And so with that, I ask you that if you have not already done so, to prayerfully consider how you can make a commitment to the church for 2021. We can't do it without you. And now let us pray for the gifts that we receive this day. Let us pray together. God of wisdom, may this offering serve as a powerful witness to this world in need. Guide us as we administer the gifts that you have given us for the building that is your kingdom in the world. We pray this through our Savior, through our Lord, through Jesus Christ, who has taught us how to stand tall in the storm. We pray this through your name, O God. And all of God's children say, Amen.
I invite you to join your hearts with mine as we pray together. Let us pray. God of love, you gave your only Son so that he would undergo great suffering for our sake. Seeing this great suffering, we believe that you understand the sufferings of the world and our own suffering. Believing that you have walked in our footsteps and that you have lived through trials and tribulations, we offer our prayers to you. We pray for wisdom, that we can communicate effectively with love, with shalom and compassion and strive to live in connectedness and understanding. We pray for courage so that we can live out our faith, giving witness with our words and actions that you are the Messiah. And we pray for the will to take up the cross and to follow wherever you may lead. And we pray for love, your love in us, so that we can live with the intentionality to know each other by name and have the deep relationships that you want us to have with you and with each other. Through Jesus Christ, who lives in unity with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, we pray the prayer your Son has taught us to pray. Praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My dear friends, I have been encouraged 
by our friend's words. I hope you are too. It gives me great confidence that with her honesty and with her vulnerability, we can all have a faith that seeks a further and deeper understanding. And in her words, I hear this. God is searching us. Jesus is helping us see. And we will be all right. We will be all right because we have been given grace upon grace. Bestowed on us by a Savior. Given to us by a God who is unavoidable. unavoidable. And that is indeed something to be grateful for and to give our praise to. Now may the peace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both in this time and place, and in every time and place. Go in peace, my friends. Let the service begin.